What's going on, everybody? Spaceballs here. Welcome back to a near reincarnation video. All right, everyone, super excited. Collab is ending. The replicant collab is coming. I know a lot of you guys are overwhelmed at this point. They did the same thing in Sin of Alice with the collabs and just the game in general. They just threw stuff in the game when it first came out, trying to catch the global server up with the JP server. Now, what I'm curious to know is what's going to happen next after we get Chapter 12, because Chapter 12 is going to be ending the story. And then we had the two collabs. So I think that's going to be a true turning point in Nier. What happens after these collabs and all the stuff they throw at us. Where the game's going to go from there. And I do think it's going to be a true turning point in Nier. And really decide where the game's future is going to be. Because right now a lot of people are either overwhelmed or bored with the game just being too much of a grind. So it's really going to lay on the dev's shoulders depending on where the game goes from here. But super excited to have the Replicate event coming. We're getting a ton of awesome stuff, and I want to cover as much of it as I can in this video. I normally wait for it to come to the game, but I figured we would go over as much as I can now in this video, and then when it is released tonight, I will make a second video covering whatever I missed in this video, because you guys know I'm an epic fan and I always miss something anyways. So I have a trailer up on the screen I want to watch with you guys. This is what's coming into the game. Shows the skills of the four-star characters. I think some of the three-star characters as well. So this is the clip, let's check it out and see what we got. One thing I do wish they would change in there is they would make the ultimates more flashy. I do think the main skills in this game aren't flashy enough. I think that's the best word for it. I hope in the future they do make them a little bit more stunning, we'll say. Because I think sometimes when I use an ultimate it doesn't look the way I would think it would. Now this is a guy character, I actually really like the way he looks. And I think he's a really good character, I think he's rated really high on the what? JP server. We'll check it out in a second though. And then we have Kane. The three star Kane looks amazing. I do think in the future guys they're gonna let us change costumes between the characters. Don't take me to the bank on that but from what I can understand they are gonna let us change their costumes in the future. I really like three star Kane. She looks amazing. I like her weapon, her outfit. I'm kind of shocked that that's not the four star version. The four star version looks cool too but not as cool as the three-star version. We're also getting a melee as well. I wasn't focusing on him too much in that clip because I was staring at Kane the entire time, the three-star version of Kane. The one thing I would like to see is Kane have dual-handed weapons. That would be pretty cool. Let's pull up this website. This is where I get all my information from. Tier lists, best characters, when stuff comes to the game, I look at this. This is spot on. So if you guys don't know about this, I'll link it down below so you guys can have access to it. Great website. Definitely recommend you guys checking it out. This is where I get all my JP information from. So we have the Replicant events that is coming on the 7th, which tonight is the 6th. So 12 hours from when this video is posted. The one thing I will say right off the bat is all of the three star characters they're giving us for free are decent. Amili is a little iffy, but the three star Kane and the three star version of the man that destroyed the world. That's why I kept forgetting his name. I don't think he has an actual name. It just says the man who destroyed the world and I can't find a name for him. I'm not too familiar with the near story and all that, so don't beat me up in the comments too much. But I think all three of these three-star characters are good characters. Again, Emily might be on the iffy side. We are getting a free Argo. I have so many Argo costumes already, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of them. So I'll have another Argo sitting in storage. I know you guys will too, but that's okay. Free is for me. This list is spot on as far as rank goes. But you want to buy the stuff in order. You always want to buy the characters and weapons first. And then you can buy the summons and the S tier stuff. And then the A tier stuff. And then the B tier stuff. But always buy the weapons and characters first. This way you can get more medals. It'll make your farming much more efficient. Just like any other event or the last collab that we had. Works the same exact way. Nothing is going to change in this one. I do like now that they're giving us gem currency in these events. The last event as well they gave us gem currency. I do like that. In the last collab, we didn't get any gems, so I'm happy to see that they're continuing that in this collab. So this is just showing the drop up and the costumes. And I really do hope in the future that we can change costumes between the character, because we have so many costumes for the characters. And it's kind of a shame that we can't switch them back and forth. From what I'm hearing, we're going to be able to, but I don't know for sure. And then we have the three four stars. So that's everything that's coming into the game on the 7th. Now let's go over them. I'm going to go over the man that destroyed the world first. We have the main skill which is inflict 70% damage on a single enemy four times. In addition, increase the critical rate of allies by 20% for 30 seconds. 
This skill looks amazing. You guys know critical rate, critical damage. I love damage, defense break, attack up, critical rate up, critical damage. I love it all. So anything that's doing a skill like this for me is spot on and I absolutely love it. Just reading his main skill, you can tell that this man is going to be a top tier character. Then for the first ability, increase the damage you do when you critical hit by 20%. So again, pairing with his main skill, really, really good. Increase your attack power by 20%. Absolutely love it. Honestly, I might be pulling for him more than I'm pulling for Kane. The thing is, I like Kane's look. I like the three-star look much better. That's why I want to be able to switch costumes. But I think Kane overall, from what I'm hearing from JP players, she's super slow. And she's not that great. And looking at this man, he looks S-tier, if not double S-tier with these skills. Boosting critical rate and his attack power. And the fact that he's boosting it on allies as well. So if you have an A2 on the team, he's going to give her 20% critical rate. And we know how important a critical rate is on A2. He looks like a really, really good character. And let's look at his weapon. And this is a spear. And we have inflicts 85% damage on a single enemy four times. 20% increase in damage dealt with critical. So again, just like the character skill, this is doing the same thing. When you hit a critical, it's boosting the damage. So pair with the character skill, this is going to be a really good weapon on him. Inflicts 50% damage on a single enemy three times. In addition, increase your attack power by 10%. So it looks like the weapon is exactly in line with the character. This man is going to be doing a ton of damage. So for the two abilities, increase your critical rate by 20%. Increase your attack power by 10%. Perfect. I absolutely love this guy. Probably the first guy in the game that I want to summon for. I don't think there's any guy currently that I want to summon for in Nier Reincarnation. But looking at this man, I wouldn't mind pulling him at all. I would be really, really happy to get him. Love his kit. Love his weapon. I wish it wasn't so much a spear, but I'm okay with it because of the kit and the fact that it synergizes with the character. So now let's check out the 3-star version of the man that destroyed the world. So for the 3-star main skill, we have inflicts 100% damage on a single enemy 4 times. Damage increases depending on the number of combos. Because you're always doing a lot of combos. I'm going to have to get this into battle to really test it out. But I like stuff that does damage over combos. My team is usually average between 15 and 25 combos anyways. So I'm thinking that this might do a lot of damage. And it's 100% damage on a single enemy. And this hitting four times. So for the first ability, increases the damage dealt when attacking three or more consecutive attacks by 24%. And then for the last one, increase your agility by 16%. For a free three star, he sounds decent. I actually like the way this kit sounds. Call me crazy. I mean, the four star version is absolutely a million times better, but hey, for a three free star, we can't complain. He might be useful somewhere in the game. He is a spear holder, and I do have Noel, so I don't know how useful he's going to be for me. But his kit doesn't sound too bad, and let's see what his weapon does paired with him. So he's holding a wind spear, and the first skill is inflicts 35% damage on a single enemy four times. In addition, the agility of a single enemy is reduced by 8% for 10 seconds. I really like the way that sounds. Reduce agility. I think that's the first weapon in the game that does that. Flicks 40% damage on a single enemy three times. In addition, increase your defense by 8%. I'm not a big fan of increased defense. You guys know that. In Nier, I don't think increasing defense is really important. It's not a terrible thing, but having on a main weapon skill, I'd much rather see something else. It's not the worst thing, but you guys know I'm not a big fan of increased defense in near reincarnation and then for the abilities we have increased the damage dealt when attacking three or more consecutive attacks by 12 percent increase your agility by eight percent so again pairing with the character perfectly hand in hand i like the character and the weapon i mean for a free three star we can't complain i will be building all of these three stars maxing them out and seeing what they can do being that it's free why not might as well make some content out of it next up on this list is going to be a millie now, the first thing I'll say about Amelie is I love the way he looks. I don't know how good he's going to be. But I love the way he looks with the Amelie head on. Absolutely love that. So he gets brownie points just for looking the way he does in my book. Now, let's check him out and see what he can do. So for the main skill, we have inflicts 520% damage. So just reading that right there, 520% damage, that multiplier is insane. Without reading the rest of the skill, I can tell you that is a lot of damage. So depending on the rest of it, this guy might be doing huge damage. And that's once to a single enemy. Damage increases depending on the number of combos. So again, like the man that saved the world, this is going to be based off the number of combos. So the way this looks to me, and just like the man who saved the world, if something is based off combos, you're going to want them to be last in your team. 
And the only issue I have with this is you're going to have to build an entire team around him. But I do love this 520% multiplier. So we're going to have to see if we can get him and do some testing with him. For the abilities, we have increased your attack power by 20%. Increase your defense by 20%. Now, again, with the defense, I was really liking this guy until I read the increase your defense. This isn't a terrible thing, depending on what the weapon does. So being that you're going to want him moving last, it looks like you're going to stack some HP on him. And then you can put some critical rate, critical damage and attack. But he's definitely going to want some HP, that's for sure. Because if you're having him move last, he's going to have to have survivability. But Amelia is definitely going to have to be speed tuned perfectly to your team to be effective. And let's check out his weapon. I'm going to try to move this along because I know this video is getting long. But there's just so much to go over. And that's why I want to break it into two videos. So this is a Wind Wand. Inflicts 50% damage on a single enemy four times. In addition, a 20% chance of giving a stun. I love stun. You guys know in Nier Reincarnation, stun is super strong, especially in PvP. Really all over the game, stun is such a great debuff in Nier. And then for the second skill, we have it covers all allies HP by 15%. I actually really like this recovers allies HP by 15%. Because being that he's going to be moving last, and now the defense doesn't hurt me as much. Because you're going to be building him tanky with a ton of HP. You're going to want him to move last. So having a 15% heal on him, that's a really good heal. And you can compare this heal with the companion. So you can get a really strong heal at once. Like a 30% heal. And being that he's going to buff his own defense, he's going to be tanky. He sounds pretty decent. Again, he's going to need a team around him. But I really do like the heal part of it. And then we have increases your agility by 10%. Increase your HP by 10%. So overall, in PvP content, I think he's going to be basically useless, subpar. Compared to the characters we have already, I don't think we're going to be using him too much in PvP content. But in memory dungeons, in the chapters, I think he's going to be double S tier, if not triple S tier. But we have so many good PvP characters already anyways, I guess it doesn't really matter. But overall, not a bad character. He's definitely going to have a place in the game. I love the way he looks. And I really do like the way his kit sounds. I didn't think I was going to, but I actually like the way his kit sounds. So I wouldn't mind pulling him. And look at him. How could you not want him? Look how cool he looks. How could you not want this man? And now let's go over the three-star version. So for the main skill, deals 140% damage to a single enemy three times. 80% increase in damage dealt when the target is poisoned. I never like things with stipulations, especially poison. I don't use poison in near at all right now. If the weapon that he gets has poison, this might be a little bit better. I'm not a big fan of poison. I'm sure if you really wanted to, you can build a poison team around this. But I'm not really sure that would be that effective. And again, we have so many characters. There's so much stuff in the game. We've had so many events. Two collabs. There's just so much stuff for us to build. Sometimes building something that is subpar isn't worth it. Maybe later on when all our stuff is built and we're just sitting on stuff, that would be different. But building stuff that's subpar sometimes is hard to do when we have so many other things to focus on. And then for the abilities, we have increased damage dealt when HP is 70% or higher by 24%. So just like 2B. And then increase your agility by 16%. Doesn't sound like anything too amazing. Seems like you're going to put some HP sets on him. The 4-star version definitely sounds better to me. He holds a wind wand. Let's see how that goes paired with the character. Causes 65% damage to all enemies in addition. The defense power of all enemies is reduced by 5%. I like that, actually. Sounds really good. Inflicts 55% damage twice on a single enemy. In addition, poison. So here we go. The weapon poisons. So it pairs with the character perfectly. So this might be a really good combo. And this is five turns. So it'll definitely be taking advantage of that skill. And this is given to a single enemy with a 100% chance. And then we have increased defense by 8%. Increase HP by 8%. So the skills definitely fit the build. You're going to be building him tanky anyways. So having this extra HP and defense is never a bad thing. I'll definitely be building all the three stars. Free is for me. And we'll do some testing and make some videos on these three stars and see how good they actually are. Being that we're all going to have them for free anyways. I'm actually working on my free video, video as we speak. And now what you've all been waiting for, Kane, the last one. Let's see what we got here and see if she is worth pulling for. I mean, I could say already the banner is going to be worth pulling on because the man that destroyed the world, he's definitely going to be worth getting. And hey, if you pull Kane along the way, I'm sure you'll be happy about it either way. So you can't go wrong no matter how you look at it. 
So for the first skill, inflicts 170% damage three times on a single enemy. Damage increases 40% when HP is 80% or higher. I think it's very similar to 2B skill as well. Increases damage dealt when HP is 70% or higher by 30%. So 30% and then 80%. So you're going to be doing a ton of damage as long as your HP is full. So you're definitely going to want to be running her with a healer. And then increase your defense by 20%. So you're going to want to put her on HP sets to make up for this defense increase. I mean, comparing it to characters that most of us probably already have, like me, I have all of the other collab characters. I have 2B, A2, 2P, all six of them I have. And I just recently got Akea. And looking at Akea's kit and looking at Kane's kit, I just don't see her being anything special. I would much rather build Akea over her at this point just from looking at this. I don't want to hate on her too much because I don't want you guys to beat me up in the comments. But I'm really not seeing why everybody wants her so bad. Let's check out the weapon. and Maybe that will change things. But even if the weapon's good, you could put this on a different character. So you don't really need Kane. I mean, obviously you need Kane to get the weapon. But a lot of people are saying they want Kane the character. And I, I'm not seeing it. Because I'm talking to the JP players and they're all telling me that she's super slow. She's not fast at all. So she's not really going to be good in PvP. And she's... Definitely not going to be that good in PvE because you can see there's so many other characters that you can use in PvE content that will just be flat out better than her. So for the first skill on the weapon, we have inflicts 110% damage twice on a single enemy. 20% increase in damage dealt when HP is 80%. So again, tying in with the character. And then for the second one, increases 45% damage on a single enemy five times. In addition, the critical rate of all allies has been increased by 7%. I really like that. You guys know critical rate increase. I love it. One of my favorite skills. So definitely like this weapon already. And just with that skill alone, and the fact that the main skill does the same thing as Kane's main skill or the second skill, but the same thing with HP being 20% or higher doing more damage, I would rather have the weapon and build the weapon than have Kane. Just the way I'm looking at it. Increases damage dealt when HP is 70% or higher. Increases your critical rate by 10%. So right there again, this weapon sounds really, really good top tier. So if I were to pull Kane, I'd be more happy about getting the weapon than actually getting Kane. Just saying. And I think the three-star version of Kane looks better than the four-star version. But if we can change costumes in the future, that doesn't really matter. I definitely like the weapon. Not so sure about the character. I'm not going to hate on her too much because I don't want you guys to beat me up in the comments. Because I know a lot of you guys are super excited to get her. I'm not sure why. Because I think the man that saved the world is a three times better character than her. Just saying. I know I have the motto, no booty, no build. But I would much rather have him than have Kane. Just saying. Even Amelie, I think. Because Amelie looks like he could be really fun in PvE content. And I really like that 520% damage multiplier that he's holding. But let's move on. Let's check out the 3-star version of Kane. The free one that we are going to get in the events. So this is the 3-star version. And again, I love this outfit. If this outfit was on the 4-star version right now, I would probably go crazy and spend all my money getting her. But it's not. We're going to get this outfit for free. So I don't have to do any summons. I'm going to do some summons. But I don't really have to. Because the outfit that I want is right here. On the free 3 star. The main skill inflicts 75% damage 4 times on a single enemy. Ignoring defense. I mean come on. That already sounds better than the 4 star version. Ignoring defense. This is free. The other one you have to spend money to get. Ignoring defense. That already sounds better than the 4 star version. I don't understand why the 4-star version doesn't ignore defense. We're getting a free 3-star that ignores defense with an awesome costume. Good job, Square Next. You guys know what you're doing. Increases damage when you do critical by 16%. Increases HP by 16%. I love this. I think out of all the 3-stars so far, I'm most excited for her. She looks fantastic. Amazing units. Can't wait. And let's check out this weapon. Again, free weapon. And this is a fire weapon. The one thing is we need more fire weapons in the game. So I'm never mad to see a fire weapon. And the main skill deals 70% damage to a single enemy four times. 20% increased damage dealt when critical. Love it. Inflicts 40% damage on a single enemy three times. In addition, increase your agility by 8%. Wow. This weapon is sounding OP for a three star, I have to say. I really like both of those skills. I'm really impressed. Increases damage when you do a critical by 8%. Increases your critical rate by 8%. Wow, this weapon is really, really good, guys. I have to say, out of all of the three-star weapons we looked at today, this weapon is top tier. 
Everything about this weapon is perfect, spot on. Really, really like it. So out of all the free characters we're getting, I'm most excited for Kane, especially for this weapon. And she ignores defense. So ignore defense with this weapon. I think this is going to be an awesome character. I think a lot of us are going to use her as a three star. And she looks amazing, so why not? But this weapon and character, I'm, I'm really impressed with how good this weapon is. And I can't wait to see what this ignore defense does. Out of all the three stars we looked at, Kane is definitely my favorite weapon and character, hands down. And out of the four stars, the man who saved the world is definitely my favorite. I do have the motto, no booty, no build. But if I was pulling on that banner, secretly in the back of my head, I'd be hoping for the man who saved the world and not so much Kane. I would much rather have the three-star version of Kane than the four-star version. And we're going to be getting the three-star version for free. So I don't know if I'm really going to be summoning on this banner, guys, to be honest. After looking at this and breaking it down in my head, I don't think it's going to be worth it for me to summon on this banner because I've summoned so much already. Basically, I summoned on every single banner except the summer banner at this point. I hate to say this, but I think this might be a hard skip for me. And being that they're giving us all these free three stars and Kane's three star being so OP, at least it seems that she's going to be OP, I might be hard skipping this banner because I still don't have Celebrity Gale, and I think I might go for Celebrity Gale over this banner. Now, don't get me wrong, I would like to have the man that saves the world, so I might do a couple pulls on this, but I don't think I'm going to be going crazy on this banner, because I don't like to summon on a banner unless I'm going to go to the pity, so this way I know I can get the character that I'm looking for. I mean, I have some time to think about it, but I don't know. I think if I do any more summons, it's going to be for Celebrity Gale, because if I'm comparing Kane to Celebrity Gale, I would much rather have Celebrity Gale just saying. So I really don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to pull on this banner, but I want to know if you guys are excited for the replicate event. Are you going to summon on the banner? Do you want Kane? Do you want the man who saved the world? Do you want Amelie? What are you going for in this collab? What are you most excited for? What weapon do you like the most? Comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for the support here on YouTube. We are so close to 4,000 subs. I mean, super close. Once we reach it, we will start another sub celebration. If you want to follow me on Twitch and Discord, those are always linked down below. Two monthly giveaways on Discord, random giveaways on Twitch. If you want to be a part of the random giveaway that we do here on YouTube, all you do is sub to the channel, like and comment on my past 10 videos, and that will automatically enter you into the random giveaway. I pick those winners on Discord. I truly do love each and every single one of you. I will see you in the next one. Spaceballs out. Peace.